everyone. Welcome to church for another Sunday, the last Sunday of the year. I'd like to open with some words from the Psalms, from Psalm 9, where we hear these words, the Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the people with equity. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Let's come to the Lord in a time of silent and personal prayer as we prepare our hearts for worship. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, that you are a refuge for us and our stronghold. And thank you that we can gather together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, acknowledging our dependence upon you and the desire of our hearts to bring you our worship and praise this morning. Fill us with strength and joy as we do that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand and sing. We didn't get through all the Christmas songs on Christmas Day, so we've got a couple more for us today. We're going to stand and begin um, our service by singing Christians Awake, Salute the Happy Morn. Let's stand to sing. I'm going to read together from Psalm 90 for our Ministry of Reconciliation this morning. Psalm 90, a, a psalm that in our tradition we often read uh, at New Year's or on New Year's Day, and I thought this is a good occasion for us to read it this morning. Psalm 90, a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. 
before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, Return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death, and they are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. And may the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. This is the word of God. And now let's come before the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. And you have been our dwelling place this year. Maybe this year feels like not not a year, but a, but a thousand days. Maybe it feels like a very long year for us. You have been near to us. You have been our God. You have, you have defended us. You have provided for us. And for that, O oh God, we are thankful. And surely this year has been full of troubles and sorrows. And it hasn't always felt that like they have quickly passed and that we have flown away from them. Father, to the extent that our troubles and sorrows have come into our lives on account of our own sin, O oh God, we pray your forgiveness. We pray that we might know your mercy and your love. We know that your wrath is great. We know that you are a God who forgives us freely in the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you would teach us to number our days, to gain a heart of wisdom. We confess to you this morning that we have not always lived wisely in this manner. We have, we have let the days slip by without thought of you. And we pray that you would help us to, to treasure each day that you give us. That you would help us to number them rightly. That you would satisfy us with your love, your unfailing love and your joy, and your gladness. Father, help us to end this year, and to end this year well. Help us to end this year at peace with you, knowing your favor and kindness. May your blessing rest upon us. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue in song. We're going to sing together another Christmas carol, Joy to the World. We're going to sing of how Jesus came. He came to take away the curse, the curse of sin. And then we're going to sing meekness and majesty about the Lord Jesus himself. Let's stand to sing together.
children, something's coming to the uh, we're coming to the end of something this year, and I wonder if someone can tell me what we might be coming to the end of. Yeah, right down in the back row there, Joel. We're coming to the end of Christmas. Did, sorry? Is it, is it Christmas that you said? I can't hear. Yep, that's what, that's what I thought you said. Yep, we've come to the end of Christmas. Christmas was on Friday, and did everyone enjoy the singing? Oh, yeah. yeah, it was good, wasn't it? So many people here, full church full of singing and praise. Something else is happening this coming week, and I can't off the top of my head think of which day it is. Let me see. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. On Thursday. Thursday is going to be the last day of something. What, what it might be the last day of? It's the last day of... Yeah, what do you reckon? The last day of the year. That's right. So we've had the last day of Christmas. We've had the last day of the year coming up. And has this been a strange year, kids? It's been a bit of a strange year, hasn't it? What have been some of the strangest things that you've that you've thought of or experienced this year, Kester? COVID. COVID. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. What were some of the things that were strange about that, Dominic? Um, lockdown. Lockdown. So when we were stuck at home for six weeks, stuck with your parents and your brothers, it was hard, wasn't it? With brothers like yours and parents like yours, it was pretty difficult. Yeah. <laughs> No, it was lots of fun, wasn't it? We had a good time. Anything else that, anything, what, yep? Two church services, yeah. Well, first of all, no church services at all, right? And just church on YouTube only. We've got some people who are on YouTube today because they couldn't come to church. Uh, some people who have got sick children, some people who are struggling with in, a, in other different ways. And then we had two church services, so you only saw half your friends every time, right? And now you can see all your friends, everyone who's around. Anything else that was a little bit strange about this year? Anything else here? Wendy, big kid? Shopping habits. Shopping habits. Did, any of you ch- did any of you children go shopping and go to find, I don't know, bread or rice or milk or things like fairly ordinary things and you saw just like empty shelves? Any of you saw that? And no toilet paper. No toilet paper. It's been some strange things about this year, but here we are, and we're nearly at the end of the year, and God has looked after us, hasn't he, kids? Here we are at the end of the year. We've come through this. We've had some challenges. It's been difficult at times, but here we are at the end, and I thought we should thank God for some of those things. Is there anything in particular you'd like us to thank God for this morning? I'm going to ask the grown-ups later on towards the end of the service, and I'm telling them now so they can be thinking. But anything in particular that you'd like to thank God for? Yeah, Kester? For the earth? Yep. What else? Yep, Riley? Family and friends. Family and friends. Yep. That no one in church has got coronavirus? Yep. That's something to thank, to thank God for. In many countries around the world, that, that's not the case. Lydia has some cousin, a cousin in the US who has COVID, and um, yeah, there's just a lot of people. Yeah, Joel? That there's what? Sorry, no. I can't hear from the back. Can someone? No COVID in Toowoomba, yeah. Okay, anything else? Yeah, you can, Jenny, you can tell me that later. Okay, let's come to God in prayer. Let's pray. Thanks, God, that you have been with us this year as children and with our families. We thank you for the earth that we enjoy and we thank you for the country that we live in and for so many good things that we've experienced despite the fact that this year has been a little bit strange with lockdown and being at home and not always being able to buy all the food that we wanted and just really strange things with church, online, different services, not seeing our friends. But you've been our God through all of that and we're thankful for that. We're thankful for all that you've given us. We're thankful for family and friends who've been a help and encouragement to us. We're thankful that No one uh, in our church has had COVID. Thank you for sparing us from from that harm. 
and thank, thankful that that's the case in Toowoomba now as well, and in fact in Queensland as a whole, and we're we're thankful for that, and we pray that next year that things will be a little bit more the way we remember them being. Um, we are just really happy and pleased that for all that you've given to us, your kindness to us, for giving us so much more than we deserve. We thank you that we can be here this morning and give you thanks together at the end of a year. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's open the Bible together. We've got two readings this morning. First reading is from Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And then we're going to turn to the book of Psalms, Psalm 121, which is our text this morning. Romans chapter 8, firstly, from verse 28. In these verses, kids, these first verses that we're reading from the book of Romans, we're going to read about how um, God watches over us. He has a plan. He's in control of all the things in the world. And everything happens in this world for our good. And nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus. That's something we can give thanks for together. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now we turn to the book of Psalms, Psalm 121. Psalm 121, a song of ascents. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and and forevermore. Amen. This is the word of God. As we come to the end of one year and to the beginning of a next, 
It's good for us to turn to God's Word. And I often turn to the Psalms at the end of a year, Psalm 90 perhaps, as we read before earlier on in our service. I'd like us to reflect on Psalm 121 together this morning. It's a psalm that begins, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Now, I come from New Zealand, as you all know, and I'm used to uh, impressive mountains, mountains to climb, mountains to ski, mountains for inspiration, now, alpine mountains for, for filming epics such as the Lord of the Rings. I'm used to impressive mountains. You'll forgive me, I hope, for saying that, look, our mountains in Toowoomba are not quite so stunning. But at least life isn't flat for us living at the top of the range. But the psalmist is looking at the mountains. He's looking at the, at the mountains as he begins his psalm. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. And as we join him, as we look up to the mountains ourselves this morning, the first thing we see is that the Lord is our help. I don't know about you, and may, maybe you experience this shopping for Christmas presents this year, but what I find really annoying when I go uh, Christmas shopping, well, it's not so bad these days because you just go onto Amazon or eBay and, and it all just comes to your door, but back in the days when I used to go Christmas shopping uh, actually in person, or, or any time you go to a, to a large department store, what I find really annoying are those people who come up to you. Uh, you don't ask for them to, to come and harass you, but they say, you know, can I help you? And I'm like, no, no, I don't want any help. I'm, I'm just, what do you say? I'm just looking, right? Which means maybe you're looking and maybe you have no intention of buying something. But look, it's not that I mind being asked if I need help, but... I'd rather be the one doing the asking. I'd rather be the one saying, look, I need some help rather than having it sort of lavished upon me. But there is someone's help that I do need. Help to get through the difficulties that I run into headlong across my path in life, which there are many. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. This psalm is described as a psalm of ascents, a psalm of, of going up, a psalm of, of traveling. It was a song that was sung by God's people as they ascended up to Jerusalem, a song sung by, by all the people as they went up to Jerusalem for the three annual festivals each year. They were going up to the temple. We normally use the word up uh, in terms of directions to refer to the direction north, don't we? We might say, I'm going up to Cairns or up to Darwin. I'm going, I'm going down to Sydney or down to Melbourne. But if you were going to climb tabletop, then you'd be saying, what would you say? You'd say, I'm going up tabletop. And you'd say you're going up tabletop no matter which direction you came from, probably from the west, but it could be from any of the directions, and that's what's like here. Jerusalem is up in the hills. It's up in the mountains. And so you would say that you're going up to Jerusalem wherever you came from in the land. I lift up, up my eyes to the mountains. And what does the psalmist see when he, when he, when he looks to the mountains? Well, when, when he looks up to the mountains, he sees, yes, he sees the place he's seeking to travel to. He sees Jerusalem. But I think especially, we might say he sees danger, potential danger. The mountains are not, are not idyllic. They're not havens of tranquility and beauty. Now, the mountains hide danger. This is a treacherous journey. Who knows what might be lurking around the corner? Either robbers, think of, think of Jesus' parable of the Good Samaritan, or lions or bears or other wild animals that might threaten, threaten his life. That's what he sees. How does he respond? 
Well, he responds by affirming that he looks to the Lord for his help. He looks to the Lord because he is the maker of heaven and earth. Does anyone in church have a, a large model railway? You know what, do we have any model railway enthusiasts amongst us? What a boring lot you all are. <laughs> no, you've nearly all seen, though. I'm sure you've all seen a model railway before. And if you haven't seen one uh, at your own house, because, like, I don't have one either... You've probably gone to Christmas Lights and you've seen the little model railway club that set up their little model train and it goes round and round and round. And, and, and I don't know what they... I've never seen it get started, but, you know, they, they electrify the tracks and they make sure all of the points are in the right direction and then the model train just goes... Boop, boop, you know, round through the tunnels and, and all of those sorts of things. And, 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 and as an observer, you can just stand back and watch, and the train just keeps going and going and going round on an endless loop, a, a continuous cycle. That's not God. Or there might be Bette Midler, and some of you who are old enough remember that she wrote a song in the 1990s with this chorus. She's, she sang, God is watching us from a distance. And that's not God either. Friends, know that the God who made the heavens and the world still cares for the world. We see that again and again in the Scriptures. Our God is the God who causes the sun to shine on the crops and make them grow. Our God is the God who sends the rain that makes the crops grow. Our God clothes the flowers of the field. He, he cares for the grass. He, he feeds the sparrows. Our God is a God who gives all people air to breathe and, and watches over the very hairs of our head. And God the Creator is still at work today. I love the teaching of the Bible, the way it's summarized in the Heidelberg Catechism, when it, when it teaches on the theme of God's providence. This is how it describes it. Take a listen. Providence is the almighty and ever-present power of God by which he upholds as with his hand heaven and earth and all creatures, so that all things come to us not by chance, but from his fatherly hand. And friends, that's why the psalmist looks to the creator when he thinks about the dangers that might lie ahead of him on his journey. Because every threat that he might face, every journey that he makes, takes place in God's world, in a world in which God reigns supreme, a world in which God is in charge. And that's been our confidence this year, hasn't it, as we reflect back on a year that's gone by, a, a disrupted year, a, a messed up year. That what seems disrupted and messed up to us is in fact in the hands of God who upholds all things. That when we say, when we confess that all things come to us not by chance but from his fatherly hand, this year is included in that confession. The disruptions we've faced in God's hands. The restrictions we've grappled with in God's hands. The isolation that we have at times experienced in God's hands. Which means as much as you might wish perhaps for this year to be over already, it's a year that has been God's plan for us. Have you grown through it? How have you, how have you grown through it? Have you become more dependent on God as your Lord, as your, as your strength, as the source of your help? Have you sought to extend help to others? Drawing on your relationship with God, knowing the Lord, the maker of the heaven and earth, is, as your God, as the source of, of your strength. The Lord is our help. And when we look to the Lord for our help, there are two encouragements that we can take. Here's the first encouragement. That the Lord keeps constant watch. 
Listen to verses 3 and 4 of this psalm. Let me read them to you again. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The psalmist is encouraging us here, friends, that God is on the job. Day or night, whatever the time is, God is on the job. God's not a shift worker. He doesn't He doesn't hand the running of the world over to a skeleton crew at night time. He doesn't slumber on the job. When I was at university, I used to work as a night manager at a a hotel and from 11 at night till 7 in the morning after having been at university all day. And this is a time for confessions, right? Sometimes I would slumber. It was hard to keep my eyes open. I had to keep my ear open for for the telephone or or the beep of the front door, but sometimes you slumber because despite your best intentions, you're just tired, You, you can't do it. But that's not God. He doesn't slumber. He doesn't sleep. He's always on duty. He he's watching out for his people. How does God watch over us, you might ask? Well, God doesn't watch over us like like a surveillance camera. God isn't like Google, tracking your every, your every search, your every movement on the internet, sucking up as much data as it can so that it can sell it to the highest bidder. God isn't like, like the social credit system in, in China with, with all the cameras and people watching over you, surveilling you in order to weigh you up, weigh you down, to assess you positively or negatively or take action always lurking, ready to pounce on you the moment you do something wrong. That's not God. No, God's watching over us for our protection, the psalm says. He knows all that's happening. He he watches our paths. And because the Lord is watching our paths, verses 5 and 6, the Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. And the sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. We read those words and the first part of that makes intuitive sense to us. Protection from the sun. That's easy for us to grasp. We're all too aware of the dangers of of skin cancer and and heat exhaustion. We're talking the Middle East here for the psalmist. We know what's in the Middle East. We know know of deserts and, and sunburn and sunstroke and dehydration and exhaustion. The sun was a real danger. That's the image that the psalmist is using to describe how God will protect us from the dangers of the sun. But the night, I don't know about you, but at first glance, if you're thinking about the oppressive nature of the heat, nighttime sounds like a good place, doesn't it? A place to escape from, from all of that. But, it, but, but in the same places in Israel, which would reach you know, 45 centigrade and, 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 and north of that during the day and provide all these oppressive conditions, the temperature can drop below freezing at nighttime. And that's just as dangerous. Or you might think of it in a different way, the the dangers of the night. Those who might be lying in wait using darkness as a cover for crime. Truth be known, in the psalmist's world, people were afraid of sinister powers thought to come from the moon. There's some ancient medieval diagnostic texts which have patients grinding teeth and having hands and feet that are trembling, thought to arise from overexposure to the moon, not the sun, to the moon. And that sounds a little bit strange to us living, living when we do, but, and yet it's, it's carried into our own language. We have people who we describe as perhaps as moonstruck, they are Mentally unbalanced, affected as if by the moon, or perhaps even more clearly, we speak of lunatics from the lunar, from, from the moon. It's in our language. But the Lord watches over us day and night, protecting us from harm. That's the message of the psalm. Protecting us from real dangers, protecting us from imagined dangers, watching over our lives. 
the Lord Jesus says, the angels are, are watching over us. And because the Lord is always watching over us, the Apostle Paul can write encouragingly to us in those words we read before, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, neither any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Lord keeps constant watch. Maybe you've gone into surgery. Maybe you've gone into surgery this year and someone's asked you beforehand how you felt. And I know how some of you have replied as, as a word of witness. You've said, I have someone watching over me. And you do. If you love the Lord Jesus, you have someone watching over you. Always. For the Lord keeps constant watch. That's the first encouragement, that the Lord keeps constant watch. And the second and final encouragement is that not only does the Lord keep constant watch, but we could describe it in this way, that the Lord also watches, uh, watches us from cradle to grave. Let me read verses 7 and 8 to you. You see them on the screen. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. And now you see, I think the psalmist's thinking expands. Not only is he thinking of day and night, 24 hours in a day, he's thinking of our coming and our going, which implies everything in between as well. Our coming, our coming into the world, our leaving of this world. From cradle to grave, the psalmist says, the Lord will keep us from all harm. And you might say this morning, how can that be? How can it be that the psalm seems to promise that the Lord will keep me from all harm, but this year I have experienced harm. Bad things happen to good people. And 2020 certainly hasn't felt like a year without any harm, has it? Yet the word the psalmist uses here for harm is, is actually the word for evil. The Lord will keep us from all evil. And I like the way someone has put it, to be kept from evil does not mean a cushioned life, but a well-armed life. I mean, think of the words that Jesus taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer. What did he say? Deliver us from evil. There will be evil. The Lord will deliver us from that evil. There will be evil. There will be trouble. Think of the evil the Lord Jesus endured on the cross when he died for us. But God will not allow evil. God will not allow harm to overcome us. He will not let us fall. Nothing will separate us from his love. Romans 8 again. And we know that in all things God works together for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Or Jude 24, which speaks of he who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. And so because the Lord watches over us day and night, from cradle to grave, from beginning to end, and because he will not allow us to fall from his eternal grasp, then again in the words of that catechism teaching I pointed you to before, we can be patient when things go against us and thankful when things go well. I want to encourage you this morning to end this year and to begin the next on a note of thankfulness. It's easy to write off, at least in our minds, a, a year that has almost passed, a difficult year, a challenging year that's, that's been so challenging in so many ways. But here we are at the end of a year and God has given us the strength that we prayed for to come through it. 
hope it's been a year in which you've grown in your dependence on the Lord. That your dependence on the Lord is your help and your strength. A year in which God has been your help. And he has. Some of us earlier on in the year, six months ago, had, had lost jobs. We had lost hours. We had less employment. But God's provided for us. He's provided new jobs for us and for our families. I hope it's been a year in which you've grown closer to your church family. To those in, in the local church whom God has given to you as a gift. Given you to help point you to him. To encourage you and support you as, as servants of the king. I hope it's been a year in which you've grown closer to God, become more aware of his watchful care and constant attention, his loving care. A year in which you have grown in confidence that God is watching over you, watching over your life, that he'll give you and will continue to give you all that you need to live life for his glory. From beginning to end, the Lord is watching over us. What an encouragement. For friends, we need to look to the Lord for our help. To watch over our comings and our goings. And then we can be encouraged that the Lord is on the job, watching over us 24-7, from beginning to end, from cradle to grave. And for the future, we can have good confidence in our faithful God and Father for nothing will separate us from his love. Let's come to God in prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you that you watch over us always. And in many ways, this has been a hard year for us. But you have been with us. You've never left us on our own. And so here we are as one year ends and another begins. And you're with us still. And may knowing your watchful care give us confidence in 2021. That we might continue to serve you faithfully and with gladness. And you'll give us strength in the plans that we make to bring you glory in our own lives, in our life as a church together, that we might continue to serve you faithfully and with gladness. For you are the maker of heaven and earth. You are our help. You are our strength. You are our all in all. And we give you thanks this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's respond and sing together in song. We're going to sing together a strong tower in which we sing of how God has been a strength to us, a tower to us, a tower of refuge and strength. Let's stand and sing together.
We're going to come before the Lord in a prayer of thankfulness and intercession. I've given you 30 minutes to think of the things that you'd like to give thanks for. The children gave you a little bit of warning. What are the things that you would like to give thanks for and especially pray for an intercession this morning as the year comes to a close? Jenny was thanking us for the rain. Thank you. You need to do charades sometime. You want Jenny on your team. I, I, I heard that without words. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> Something else that you'd like to give thanks for? Yeah, Nell. Freedom. For freedom. Someone wanted us to give thanks for Jesus. Was that you, Peter? Absolutely. Yeah, Bryce. Okay. Darren. Absolutely. Good thanks for that. Anyone else? John. I'm grateful that it's come across our way this year that we have been able to minister to. Hmm. Friendship. Friendship. God's sovereignty. God's sovereignty. Creature. World leaders. Wendy. Mm -hmm. So travels for the Adams and Marty and Susie are planning to go on holiday down to Victoria today. They're out of isolation at 12 o'clock. So we're very thankful for that. Um, we'll pray for them as they travel. Pray also for Arne and Yvonne. Uh, Yvonne's hopeful that Arne might be able to come uh, home soon, uh, recovering from his stroke. Also want to pray for Stephen Downs and the family. Um, Steve had a scan this week, and while the, while the cancer that he's had has shrunk, it has spread to some nearby areas as well, and so there's a lot of uncertainty uh, for them at the moment, so we'll remember them in our prayers as well. Let's come to God in prayer. Our Father in heaven, thank you that you have been a strong tower and a refuge to us this year. And we're thankful that you've continued to provide for us and all that we need. You have given us rain to fall and refresh and water the earth. We're thankful for rain that's fallen and we are thankful in advance for rain that we anticipate coming in the next couple of months. Thank, thank you for caring for this world, that you are not only the maker and creator of heaven and earth, but the God who cares for our world. We thank you, Father, for the great freedoms that you've given to us as well. And as we turn on the TV or read the newspaper, uh, check social media, we see that we are one of only a few countries in the entire world which have as much freedom as we do right now. So many other countries are in lockdown or about to be in lockdown with so many of the things that we have begun to take for granted once again, um, taken away from them. We're thankful for the freedom that we have. We're thankful for the freedom that we have to gather again as an entire church community to worship. We give you thanks for that and we give you thanks for uh, those who've helped uh, on our sound desk and video team for the hard work of the elders and Alex to make all of this possible. And we give you thanks. We take, maybe, maybe we've taken the ability to gather for worship week by week for granted. And we do so no longer, but we desperately give you thanks for that. We thank you most of all for Jesus, whose birth we just remember just two days ago. And as we gathered as a church community to give thanks and sing our, at the joy and the wonder of, of a saviour born to the world to grant peace to all through faith in the Lord Jesus. We're thankful, Father, for the people that you've uh, brought into our lives this year. 
not only for the friendships that you've uh, helped us to establish and maintain that have given us strength uh, on earth during a uh, time of lockdown earlier on in the year, but people that we've been able to minister to and share of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that you are sovereign over all things, and that has been a confident, that has given us confidence this year, that you haven't been taken by, by, caught by surprise by any of the things that have happened in our world. And we're thankful for that, even though we, we can't quite see very clearly what your purposes have been through all of this. And yet, we are confident that you are working out your plan, and you've been our God and continue to do so. And under your sovereignty and under your authority and rule, we are thankful for the leaders that you've given us in this world to, to guide and to watch over us for good. We're thankful for their cooperation. We're thankful for their concern to do what is best. And we haven't always agreed with everything that they have said or thought best, but we do believe, Lord, and we give you thanks for their good-heartedness and their desire to do what they think has been right and best in all circumstances. We pray that you would grant safety and travel as, uh, as people, m members of our congregation travel. And part of the safety we pray for, Lord, is strength to uh, navigate the changing border restrictions. We pray for members of our church travelling uh, interstate with the challenges that that brings at this time. We pray for Marty and Susie and we, we give you thanks, Lord, that it seems possible that they'll be able to head down to Melbourne uh, and see family for the first time in the best, better part of a year. We pray that that might be a time uh, of encouragement for them, especially after having spent a, a week isolated at home over the past week. Thank you for the joy that we could share with them in celebrating Christmas Eve with carols together on their, on their driveway. We thank you for, for them and pray your blessing upon them. We also pray, Father, for Stephen and Jen Downs and the family. We pray that you would give them confidence in you and the midst and in, 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 in the light of unsettling news. We pray that you'll watch over them. We do pray for healing and strength. We pray for wisdom for those uh, doctors who are caring for them at this time. We pray for Anne and Yvonne as well, and we're thankful for, um, for the, the strength that you've uh, helped uh, Anne to regain and for the good work that he's done in, in rehabilitation. And we pray that he might be able to return home, to be able to uh, live at home with Yvonne again shortly. Watch over them, we pray. Father, we give you thanks for all that you have been to us this year. We commit the rest of this year and the new year to you. In the name of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing of God's mercies as we stand and sing, O oh, the mercy of God.
as you go forth this week into a new year, as you go forth, may you know the Lord as your help and your strength. May that give you the courage to face the challenging circumstances that you will find on, on your path this week and in the year that lies ahead. As you go, may you, know, may you go knowing the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. May the triune God be with you all. And all God's people said, Amen. We're going to sing one final song as a prayer, a song of farewell to Jason and Rebecca and their family. We're going to sing God be with you till we meet again. And that's a song that they can sing for us as well because we're also going to be a part. And so we pray God's blessing upon the Adams family as they leave us and head up to Canberra. We hope to see you again. Down. What's, down. Sorry, down. <laughs> Not up to Canberra. Down. I should be listening to myself. Yep. My name is Pastor Andrew and you've been worshipping with us today at the Christian Reformed Church of Toowoomba. Whether you're local to Toowoomba, whether you're joining us from somewhere else in Australia or around the world, we're glad that you could join us as we worship our great God and Saviour together. Especially if you're local, we would love to see you. We'd love to meet you and have you join us for worship. That's part of God's plan for humanity, that we gather together as his people and worship as brothers and sisters in Christ. If you'd like to join us, a church that exists to glorify God by growing in faith, sharing our hope and serving in love, then we would love to see you. You can visit our website at toowoombacrc.com or visit our Facebook page. Either way, you'll be able to get in touch with me and find out when our service times are. We'd love to see you with us. Wherever you are, though, may God be with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen.